Intrinsic value is arguably the most important thing to know when it comes to investing. Because if you can't calculate the intrinsic value, then how do you know if you're getting a good deal for the stock? How can you tell if you're not overpaying? No intrinsic value equals no idea if the stock is worth buying or not. As Warren Buffett says, the critical investment factor is determining the intrinsic value of a business and paying a fair or bargain price. So that brings us to the question, well, how do we calculate the intrinsic value of a stock? That is what this whole video is going to be dedicated to, a simple step-by-step -step guide on calculating the intrinsic value of a stock. Okay, Warren Buffett makes the definition of intrinsic value crystal clear. He said, intrinsic value can be defined simply. It is the discounted value of the cash that can be taken out of a business during its remaining life. So we look at the business, we determine how much cash it will generate over time, and then we discount these cash flows back to the present day. In order to do this calculation, we need three ingredients. One is the current cash flow, two is the cash flow growth rate, and three is the discount rate in order to discount the cash flows back to the present day and determine our intrinsic value. The reason why Buffett specifically said cash flow instead of earnings, which is a more popular metric, is because earnings can easily be manipulated by the management team. But on the other hand, it is extremely hard, almost impossible, to manipulate the actual physical cash flows that a business generates. Put simply, cash flow is more reliable than earnings. So to find the cash flow, it's pretty easy in the modern day or thanks to the internet. For this example, I'm going to use Apple stock since that's quite a well-known talked about stock. Even Warren Buffett owns it himself. So the website that we use to get these metrics is called Guru Focus. So let's type in Apple stock Guru Focus. Then what we want to do is go to the DCF section, discounted cash flow. And if we just zoom in right here, it will tell us what the current cash flow is for Apple stock. So right now, the free cash flow is $5.57. So remember that figure because we're going to be using it soon. But before, we need to determine what the growth rate is going to be for that cash flow in the future. Remember that Buffett said to calculate the intrinsic value, you need to discount the future cash flows of the business. In order to know the future cash flows, we need to know how much the current cash flow is going to grow by. So for Apple, the example that we're using, the current cash flow is $5.57. What will the growth rate be for the cash flow? One of the best ways of determining future growth rates is by looking at the growth rates in the past. Then you can extrapolate this into the future. But you want to be more conservative and make it somewhat lower since businesses grow faster at the beginning and then they start to slow down. So to find Apple's past cash flow growth rate, just go to the exact same place that we were at before. Here is where we found the current cash flow, and here is where we see the past cash flow growth rates. So don't worry about the one year growth rate, it's better to focus on the longer term ones. So over the past five years, Apple has had an 8% growth rate, and over the past 10 years, it's been 16.2%. If we look at the growth rate in earnings per share, it's around these same figures. So in the future, we can say that over the next five years, we might see an 8% growth rate. And the five years after that, we might see around a 6% growth. And now we have two of the key ingredients that we need to put into our formula for intrinsic value. The best way of doing this is through an Excel spreadsheet calculator because it just makes things so much easier. So here we have the Excel spreadsheet which we'll use to calculate the intrinsic value. And by the way, I'm going to attach this spreadsheet in the description below for all of those who want to download and use it for free. So how good is your memory? The first thing that we need to do is put in our current cash flow and for Apple stock that was $5.57. Then we need to plug in our cash flow growth rate figures over here. 
So if you remember, our first five years, we had an 8% growth rate. And for the five years after that, we had a 6% growth rate. So every year, you can see how much we expect the business to generate in cash. In 2022, if it grows by 8%, we'll get $6.02 in cash. Then if it keeps growing by 8%, it'll be $6.50, $7.02, $7.58, and so on. So for 10 years, we will get all of this in terms of cash. But on the 10th year, we also get another big lump of cash, and that's when we sell the stock if we choose to. This is called the terminal value, and it's the last bit of cash flow that we need to calculate. So in order to work out the amounts that we'll get for selling, we simply find the cash flow that it's generating when we sell in the 10th year, and we times it by a multiple. I've decided to use the multiple of 20 because that is lower and more conservative than Apple's current cash flow multiple of 20. 6.9 and now we have all of the cash flows that we can expect to get for apple across a long term period of 10 years the final ingredient that we need for the calculator is the discount rate that we can expect to use once we have the discount rate we can determine the intrinsic value So the discount rate is the rate in which we use to discount the cash flows back to the present day. Essentially, it's the expected return that you think is reasonable to get on a stock. The discount rate that you use can depend on the market. If the market is pricey and you want a 20% return, well, then you'll find it very hard to get a stock at the price you want. If the market is cheap, however, well, then there'll be quite a few stocks that have prices with a discount rate of 20%. In today's market, and generally speaking, I like to use a discount rate of around 10%, which is almost double than what the market return is priced in at. So 10% is more than reasonable. Right, so let's plug in 10% and see what we get. As you can see right here, based on the current growth rates and a discount rate of 10%, it shows us that Apple stock's present value is around that $125 mark. If we look at Apple's price today, it's selling for around $150. So if anything, Apple would be slightly overvalued currently after its high growth in price over the past couple of years. But you might argue, hey, didn't Warren Buffett buy big into Apple stock? Isn't Warren Buffett someone who will only buy a stock when it's well undervalued? Yes, it is true that he bought Apple, but he did all of his buying from 2016 to 2018. Back then, the price was $25 to $50, significantly undervalued compared to the intrinsic value. The price today, it's a completely different story. It's three to six times higher than the price that Buffett was buying Apple stock. This may give us a good idea as to why he hasn't bought any more. But an important thing that I need to point out is when you make these intrinsic value calculations, avoid precision thinking. When you're calculating the intrinsic value, you shouldn't necessarily look for a precise figure on the exact value of the stock. No, you should be using your calculations to get an idea for what the stock is worth. As Warren Buffett says, as our definition suggests, intrinsic value is an estimate rather than a precise figure. It is better to be approximately right than precisely wrong. So what you want to do is make it a habit of calculating the intrinsic value of each stock that you analyze. If you do this for a while, you'll start getting a very good feel for the market and you'll become way more skilled at identifying the stocks that are undervalued. Because of course the goal is to find the stocks that are priced well under their intrinsic value. But remember, the intrinsic value is just a quantitative measure. This should not exclude you from doing the other forms of analysis on a stock. You need to also make sure that you understand the business model in depth. You need to make sure that the stock has a great set of managers in place. And it's also important that the stock's business model is of high quality. A model that will be thriving in 5, 10, 20 years time. These qualitative measures are equally important as the quantitative. But calculating the intrinsic value of a stock, some people think that it is very complicated. But if you follow the Warren Buffett method, it's actually quite simple. 
find the current cash flow of the business. You can go to Guru Focus to easily get this figure. Then determine the growth rates for this cash flow for 10 years. Number three, work out the multiple you think you can sell it for, for your terminal value in 10 years time. And the last thing that you need to do is work out the discount rates for your cash flows to discount them back to the present day. Easy. I've attached the spreadsheet to use for it below, which makes the practical side of things a lot easier. And do this calculation often and you'll start getting very good at calculating the intrinsic value of a stock.